What's up Busy Nation and welcome to another video on starting a business in New Zealand. In this video we'll be going through different company entities in New Zealand and which one would benefit you the most. My name is Drew and I'm the founder of getbusy.co.nz, an online portal for New Zealand businesses to network and grow together. So if you own a business in New Zealand or you're an entrepreneur looking to start a business, feel free to click on over, links down in the description and check it out. It's completely free and it's a great way to meet other like-minded people uh, and start growing your business. All right, let's jump into it then. First of all, we have NZ Limited companies. What do you need to know about these particular companies? Well, first of all, your liability is limited to the money owing on shares and personal guarantees given to lenders. So if the company goes bust, you are only held accountable for the particular amount of shares and personal guarantees that you've given out to lenders. This is great, although business owners who form their company under this particular entity aren't as covered as they used to be in previous years. There are certain cases where people have gone to court and uh, won in favor of getting money off uh, company owners who have spent beyond reasonable means of being able to pay back. So basically, in a nutshell, just don't be stupid with how you spend your money. Uh, it's always better to spend your money wisely and use as minimal amount of startup capital as you possibly can or seek outside investors that purchase a certain percentage of your company and then are liable for that themselves. Secondly, uh, it is the most common structure for companies in New Zealand and Rightly so, I would recommend it as my personal choice when it comes to setting up a company. If you'd like to learn more about limited liability companies, you can head on over to the Companies Act 1993. It's obviously full of kind of lawyer speak and their particular jargon, so it's a bit of a read. If you're still unsure with whether or not you want to start at NZ Limited Liability Company, then I'd advise going and speaking to a professional. And I will also be creating a video going into more depth when it comes to NZ liability companies. That is because I myself recommend it and my own business is set up as an NZ limited liability. Uh, I think it's the way to go. So if you want to check out that video, link will be in the top right hand corner right now. Secondly, we have NZ cooperatives. Now, NZ cooperatives are quite well used throughout New Zealand. There are some specific examples that I've covered here, Fonterra, Foodstuffs, Farmlands, FMG and Mitre 10 are all registered as NZ cooperatives. And there's a few things that you'll recognize when it comes to those particular businesses. And it is they really look after their clientele, after the, the members who you know use them. For instance, with FMG, with farmers, uh, you'll see ads plus all over the TV about how uh, they're in it for the locals. So they are owned and controlled by their members. The people who use their services and buy their goods are uh, who own them and they get a say in how the business is run, which is, is really cool if you actually think about it. They uh, return a majority of their surplus to their members um, and are very member focused. You can find out more about uh, cooperatives by heading over to the Cooperative Companies Act, which I think is a 1996 act. And companies registered as an NZ cooperative pay tax on income kept in the co-op. Uh, members pay the rest, so members pay tax on any income generated by the co-op distributed to their members. Uh, so it can be quite a, a tax savvy way of doing it. But in general, uh, cooperatives are in it for the people, in it for the people who utilize their particular brand, which can be a very um, successful way of doing business as at the end of the day, you're basically a giant customer service company. And we all know how important customer service is when it comes to running a successful business. So this just magnifies that. Thirdly, we have NZ Unlimited Liability Companies. And what you need to know about these is that you are personally fully liable for business debts, including uh, if you have any partners, you could be liable for their debts as well. So if one of your partners or someone else in the business uh, goes on a spending spree and racks up a whole bunch of ridiculous debts, you need to know that you could be liable for those debts. Just relaying that one sentence, you would rightly assume that there's not very many unlimited companies in New Zealand and the reasons for an unlimited company if you were to start one is they're often used to meet particular regulations and uh, legal requirements for foreign, main, or mainly foreign companies. So companies wishing to do business in New Zealand. 
As I've already covered off, uh, they're not very common, and if you are looking to start an unlimited company, it is highly advised that you seek legal counsel prior to doing so. Moving into the overseas side of things, we first have an overseas ASIC or ASIC. Uh, first of all, we'll run into that acronym and what it stands for, which is Australian Securities and Investments Commission. Basically, an overseas ASIC is an Australian company wishing to do business in New Zealand, and because we have obviously a good relationship with Australia, this is the only country that gets their own specific entity. Uh, so obviously we have a really great relationship with Australia. When you are forming an ASIC, you must register in New Zealand if they intend to carry out business in New Zealand. Now, I'll put a link down below as to the terminology of what carrying business out in New Zealand means. Um, and head over to the Companies Act and, and have a look at that if you're unsure. As I've been saying throughout, you'd probably want to head to a professional and get their opinion. Australian companies looking to do business in New Zealand need to either form as a branch or a subsidiary. Now, I'll be going through what those two particular entities mean in the slides below, so stick around for that. Finally, we have overseas non-ASIC companies. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's for any company wishing to do business in New Zealand that is from outside New Zealand or Australia. As I've said with the ASIC company, you must register in New Zealand if you intend to carry out business in NZ, and I'll put a link down below where you can find out more information about that. It is for companies from the rest of the world, as I've just detailed, and that pretty much is all you need to know about that. So, as I said above, when it comes to tax, as an NZ branch of an overseas company, you'll be taxed as a non-resident. You'll be required to file two sets of financial statements, a New Zealand earnings and international earnings. Finally, you are liable for anything incurred under NZ law, and it is not considered a separate entity. Next, we have subsidiaries. As above with branches, you are considered a resident for tax purposes. You're required to file financial statements for NZ business only. The company forming the subsidiary, which would be an overseas company, owns 100% of the shares. And finally, you are registered on the company's register in New Zealand. The third and final option for an overseas company is to become an NZ company. So basically what this means is the company leaves its company of incorporation and transfers incorporation to New Zealand. So if you're looking to move from one country to another and you want to bring your business with you, this would be the way to go. Obviously very technical in the ways you're doing it, so seek out professional aid. And that concludes the presentation for today. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the content and it helped you out in any way, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for future videos on starting a business in New Zealand. It'd be massively appreciated. As always guys, remember it's your life, live it on your terms and do what you love. Mm.